Hi everyone. Thanks for joining. We're just getting up on, um, just give me a couple seconds. One minute. See who is joining. Where's everyone joining from? weekend. Ooh, Naperville, Omaha, Nebraska, Glendale, Arizona. Just trying to get this live going. Delaware, Georgia. Wow. It's awesome. It's probably about as hot here as it is in Georgia. So we're just going to get started because I'm having a little bit of technical difficulties. But hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Cooking Together. Uh, this is a live series that is meant to help you through these strange times that we're all going through. And we're hoping to equip you with the skills and the techniques and the tools so that you can conquer your kitchen during this time at home. Uh, my name is Sarah Young and I am part of the Kraft Heinz culinary team. I'm really excited to be here today to tell you um, about how I sort of plan for weeknight meals. So we're going to talk about the 10 pantry staples that you need to keep in your kitchen in order to conquer weeknight dinner. Um, so even though I'm a mom of two and I do two pickups and drop-offs each day, um, when my kids are in school or summer camp or something like that. And though, even though we're all home right now and I'm not rushing in the door from a long day at work with two kids in, in the back seat, I'm still, um, I'm still facing the question around 4.30 every single day, which is what's for dinner or when's dinner going to be ready? So I'm still feeling that crunch even though I'm not working. So I wanted to share with you, this This may seem really basic um, and kind of old school, but honestly, I just, I usually write down dinners on a random piece of paper. This is a piece of construction paper because I just usually grab a scrap. Um, I know that I could do this on my phone, but for some reason, I remember it more when I, when I write it. So even if I forget my list or something, if I've written it down, um, I usually remember it when I go to the grocery store. So what I like to do is kind of just list the dinners that I think my family would like that week, maybe something that we haven't had in a while. A lot of times I go to my pantry and I sort of dig around and see if there's any um, half bags of pasta or rice or anything like that that I need to use up and that sort of jogs my memory um, to think of the meals that I haven't made. and then. What I usually do is just make a list of those dinners and then I'll take a look at my week. So a lot of times I will, so, so to speak, assign um, different dinners to a different day based on what I have going on. If I know that I have a meeting later in the day that's gonna push everything back 30 minutes, that cuts into my cooking time and it's probably gonna be a night when I pull something out of the freezer or just get something very, very fast like, you know, um, pasta, jar of sauce, and um, some veggies or something or a bag of salad. Okay, so this is kind of where I start and I would highly recommend um, that you do this because it really will, um, it will help you and it, it's not a hard and fast 
rule that you have to make these things on these days. I mean, I switch things around based on um, how the week is going. And sometimes I'll, um, you know, it's just, it's a nice reminder as to what I have in the house that I can make. So um, if plans change, I can change um, the, the week. We're gonna start with kind of those pantry basics. Um, and, you know, feel free to pop any of your questions into the chat and I will try and get to them at the end. Okay, so the first thing is probably no surprise to any of you, um, pasta. So I like to keep um, a couple different shapes just because it keeps it fun for my kids. Um, I have some penne here and I have um, some whole grain or whole wheat spaghetti noodles. These are just so versatile. Um, you know, sometimes I feel like I could make a pasta salad or something with this or a, a, hot, um, a hot pasta dish. I've also used this for like an Asian noodle salad as well as Italian pasta dishes. So really, really versatile. The next item also probably comes as no surprise to you, which is pasta sauce. So jarred pasta sauce is such a gem in the kitchen. You can really use it in so many different ways, kind of classically just pouring it over, heating it up and pouring it over your um, cooked pasta, or you can really transform it. So I wanted to show you kind of what I sometimes like to do if we're all just getting a little tired. So if you can kind of see here, all I've done here is heated up some uh, some jarred classical pasta sauce and then I just put um, on I turned off the heat and I stirred in about two ounces of Philadelphia cream cheese that just completely transforms it into a creamy tomato sauce and I love it it just totally changes it, it makes it a little bit you know not fancy but just different you can also do that with pesto sauce I love keeping um, refrigerated or store-bought pesto in my freezer and then I'll just I can make that creamy or I can add that to pasta so all different types of pasta sauces are great to have on hand all right let's go on to some other um, grains and stuff breadcrumbs are so handy um, I personally prefer panko breadcrumbs but I tend to keep both on hand they're great for meatballs or if you want to coat um, chicken to make a crispy chicken dish. Really, really, really nice to have. And then I always have some sort of rice. Um, our family prefers brown rice or wild rice. And so I will, um, I just keep it in these containers because sometimes they come in bags that if I don't use it all, they're gonna go all over my pantry. So I love keeping anything that's loose in these um, airtight containers. The other nice thing is that if you make too much rice, which I'm sure we've all done before, um, you can save it. You can put it in the fridge and save it, or you can pop it in the freezer and then just like thaw it out when you need, you know, extra rice to add. So I always like to do that because um, I'll use that frozen rice or refrigerated rice for um, chicken fried rice and it's a great just something you can whip together. Okay, um, stuffing is really great to have on hand. So I know we probably all think of stuffing as something we only eat at Thanksgiving. Sometimes you kind of get that craving for stuffing in July, you know, you never know. But it's great to have on hand because it is all seasoned and it's ready to go. So it adds amazing flavor to the top of a casserole or um, one of my favorite recipes with stovetop stuffing is our easy pleasing meatloaf. It's a cinch to make, it's just ground beef, the stuffing mix, some eggs, and then you um, put barbecue sauce on the top. And it is amazing the night of and amazing the next day for some leftovers. So always like to think about the things that we can um, have as leftovers. I wanted to go into a few canned items. And I'm gonna show you how to make a really simple salad that I like to make. Um, so I like to keep a variety of different beans and um, canned vegetables. I definitely have my preferences on canned vegetables as well as 
um, some frozen vegetables. So there's certain frozen vegetables that I think are just must, you know, haves in your fridge. The first is peas. So keep these in your freezer. I mean, they last so long. Always nice to just toss into a beef stew or into a chicken fried rice. I mean, it's great to have on hand. Um, I also always have frozen spinach. And the reason is because to get as much frozen spinach with fresh, I mean, my entire fridge would be filled with, um, with spinach because it wilts down so much that it's just, it's great to have frozen. The beans that I like to keep are cannellini beans. Um, these are great to have because they're great in soups. Um, black beans, which I'm gonna show you, um, are great in salads. They are a little bit firmer, so um, they hold their shape really nicely in salads. Garbanzo beans are also quite good for, um, for salads. And I, I like to have canned or frozen corn. And the reason is because, you know, sweet corn is um, a very narrow window, but you can guarantee that the canned corn and the frozen corn are always going to be quite sweet. So I wanted to show you a, just a quick salad that I like to make that really is just opening up a few cans, chopping a few vegetables, um, and it's, it's really, really simple. So I like to make this on taco night just because it's fresh and easy. Um, I have a uh, 15 ounce can of black beans that I drained. And then I just have a small can here of corn niblets. And I'm just gonna drain out any water that is in there. There's usually not too much, um, but I'm just gonna add those in. So this is just a really nice salad. I mean, honestly, you can pretty much toss in anything that you want. Today I'm going to use black beans, tomatoes, corn. I just have some um, grape tomatoes here that I started slicing up. So I'd say I have, you know, a oh, uh, one pint container. Um, and I'm just having them through the center just so that they're easier to eat. I find that sometimes um, some of these grape tomatoes are quite large. I don't know, recently I have noticed that they are much bigger than um, I remember them being. Blackberries too actually have gotten so big. Um, all right, so I just have some halved um, grape tomatoes and then I have a red onion. So what I did is I cut it through the root end and then I peeled off the outer um, skin, the paper, and I'm just going to um, dice this. I don't like super huge um, pieces of the onion, so what I'm doing is I'm just um, making some cuts here uh, vertically and then horizontally, and then I will go back down, and we have a nice, perfectly chopped red onion. So we're just gonna put, eh, it's probably, that was a pretty big onion, so just about a quarter. And then I have a um, an orange pepper. I just like to cut it right down the center. This is just, this is how I do it. And then I grab it, sort of peel it out. Um, I don't know, I don't get too fussy about if there's a little membrane or anything left. But I do like to cut it um, with uh, the skin side down, just because I feel like I can get a better grip. If you all tuned in um, to my um, essentials last week, you'll see I'm using my favorite knife um, because it's so easy. All right, so I'm just um, cutting these into like a small dice. Pop that in. You can see I love all the colors. I have half of an avocado here. It's still a little, you know, just popped it out. I like to, if it, when it's not super, or it's, you know, still getting to the super ripe stage, I'll pop it out of the half and then just dice it on my board. 
um, so that it doesn't slip. All right, and then all I'm gonna do kind of takes me into some of my next uh, things that I like to keep on hand. I have a little bit of lime juice here, just a couple tablespoons, and I am going to jazz up this uh, Kraft Zesty Italian dressing. So I always have Italian dressing on hand because it's just a nice basic dressing. Um, it's great for obviously pasta salads or green salads. I'm just gonna add about a quarter cup of dressing. Shake it up though, because a lot of the seasonings and stuff can settle to the bottom. So I'm just gonna mix it with the lime juice. This is a really easy thing to do. You could absolutely add some cilantro to this if you wanted, um, but I'm just gonna toss this all over, toss this together, and this is a great fresh side for pretty much any night of the week. A great um, side for any kind of grilled grilled meats or Taco Tuesday, right? Tonight. Hope you guys give this a try. Um, so I mentioned the salad dressing. Great to have on hand. Um, if you tuned in a couple weeks ago, we actually seared um, our meat in this dressing. Uh, you can also use this as a marinade. So, you know, something you can do before you leave the house. Just pop your chicken in a plastic bag, pop some of this in the bag, let it marinate all day, and it'll be ready to go. Um, the other thing that I like to keep on hand is some light soy sauce. I feel like soy sauce is just, it's so savory. It has a great, you know, umami, and it really brings things to life. So I will absolutely, you know, use this whenever I'm making any Asian um, dishes, um, like, you know, fried rice or um, dressings and things like that. You can actually add a little soy sauce to Italian dressing, make some really nice, um, really nice sauce. And the last thing that I wanted to talk through is having salsa on hand. So salsa, um, if you tune into the slow cooker, um, 101, you can really make such an easy chicken, um, with just a jar of salsa and some chicken breasts or chicken thighs. Just pop it in your slow cooker, let it cook, and you have great, shredded, flavorful chicken for lots of different meals all week long. Um, salsas have such great flavors these days. Um, this one is just kind of a traditional tomato, Taco Bell salsa, salsa, but comes in mild or medium. You can always jazz it up if you want to. The other thing that I sometimes like to do is I mix a little bit of salsa with ranch dressing, and that just elevates um, a taco salad, um, as a nice drizzle. It's a great sauce um, for your tacos. So keep that one in mind. I think that those are all the tips that I have um, today. So let me see if we have any questions. Let's see here. I see a question about how long jarred sauce will last. So sometimes, you know, I don't use the entire jar of sauce and you can keep it in the refrigerator for like five to seven days um, once you've opened it. Um, but just keep an eye on it because, um, you know, there's uh, not a ton of preservatives and things like that in tomato sauce. So um, it's not indefinite. Let's see. Um, so how long can you store any cooked rice? So like I said, if you, um, if you make too much rice, don't throw it away. You can use it in so many different things. Sometimes I even mix it into ground turkey, um, and I'll make what I just, I like to call them burrito burgers. Um, so I kind of mix all the things that would be in a burrito into a, a burger patty. So just keep it in the freezer or in the refrigerator, um, easily in the fridge for like five, five days. I would say in the freezer for probably several weeks. Um, the containers uh, were purchased on Amazon, but you can absolutely find them at any sort of um, home good type store where um, kitchen equipment and, and things like that are sold. 
let's see, how do you keep your pantry organized? So I have to say, I'm not always the most organized. Um, you know, I try um, and I try and keep it organized as much as I can, but for the most part, I follow the same rules. So usually I organize by pasta and rice, um, any kind of grains. Then there's usually a layer of, I think, breakfast foods and canned goods and things like that that are at sort of eye level. Um, then I have sort of snacks. And then on the bottom, I have what I call just my ingredients, um, things that are flour, sugar, you know, uh, brown sugar, just loose ingredients that actually need to be, you know, baked together. So that's, that's how I do mine. And then it looks like there's a question about spices. So we didn't cover spices and you know, that's a good, um, that's a great question. So things that I tend to use a lot, um, absolutely kosher salt and black pepper. I think it's always nice to have something that you can add a little heat if you prefer heat. So crushed red pepper flakes. Um, I also really like keeping um, uh, chili powder and cumin on hand. Um, just because I think that they're really versatile um, and they, uh, you know, they can jazz up a salad really, really nicely. Also, if you run out of taco seasoning, you can kind of whip together um, an easy taco seasoning with um, just some chili powder, uh, cumin, and um, if you have some paprika, um, and then if you want to spice it up, you can you can add a little red pepper flakes to it. So. You know that's kind of in a pinch if you run out it's really easy with with those things so those are some of my favorites i also keep like probably my favorite sweeter spice is cinnamon um just because i feel like i can use it um breakfast um on smoothies or in baked goods and, and things like that okay I don't think that we have any more questions. I want to thank you all for tuning in after this holiday weekend. Um, please let us know if you have any additional questions. And until then, let's all keep cooking together. Thanks so much. Bye.